Good morning, good morning, good morning. Make sure this thing is working. I just went on a 15 minute rant and all of a sudden I looked down and says, I can't hear you. My microphone was not on. So good morning. Welcome to the Hour of Power, February 19, 2023. I'm your host, Joseph David Shermer, which means God will give his beloved. As I looked up my name a few months back, got that message and then got the command. Make sure you're paying attention to the commands you're being received from the commander in chief. So I got that signal. I said, okay, Joe Shermer, you're no longer Joe Shermer, you're Joseph David. And he gave me the meanings of why. So uh, welcome to the Hour of Power. And setting the attention for this call, why do you do this, Joe? I was getting those questions last week. Why do you do this? I said, this can help one person. I'm doing my job. This can help one family. I'm doing my job. This can help one person from stopping to do something they shouldn't be doing to themselves. I'm doing my job. And leadership's not easy. Right? So I was flying back from Houston last night. Got home around 12.30. Went to bed around 1.30. Here I am, 8.15, serving. Why? Because that's a calling. It's a calling to, to step forward and, and to lead with, with certainty, lead with power, lead, lead with intention. And the intention is to help at least one person through these messages. So details matter, right? So I'm sitting here half asleep, and uh, I looked over and I saw my microphone wasn't on. I was getting feedback. That's why I love to get the interaction. I love to have interaction here when I get onto these calls. Please ask questions, give comments and feedback, share this with your friends. Like it, comment on it. It gives it the algorithm for other people that receive this message as well so we don't keep it to ourselves. But uh, a couple of messages I want to talk to you guys about today is how do we pray? Uh, men supporting men at the edge and treat your wife and kids as your clients and your customers. And most of us knows me. I mean, some of the things I've done to Kathy over the years when I came home from the battlefield of, of executing in business, and I'm very short with her. And I'm, most of you men can relate this. You come home, you give everybody else your attention, and you treat them fairly, and you come home, and you treat your kids and you treat your wife very short because they should know better. They understand this. And the reality is, no, you should be treating them better than you're treating your customers and your clients. For you business people out there that are doing that, or if you're just a... a a uh, person that's coming home from a hard day's work, make sure, take off your armor, hang it outside in the tree before you walk into the door. If you walk into the door with that work energy, and my wife actually gave me feedback about this yesterday on one of the phone calls when I called home from Texas, and she says, I love that version of you. So that compassionate version of when you call home and you, and you, and you explain this to Chuck on the phone. So. That's great feedback. Please comment below if this is working. I just did a 15-minute rant on the Rises One Group. I don't know how I got into the Rises One Group, but that was my personal page here for the Hour of Power. What is the Hour of Power? The Hour of Power is the first half hour of the day, the last half hour of the day. The things that we put into our mind, body, and spirit is what you worship. So if you're worshiping the news, you're going to have a lot of fear, doubt, and trauma going into your nervous system. If you're worshiping ESPN Sports Center, like I used to do back in the day, you're going to become a sports nut like I was. And every single minute, every single day, I, all I cared about, I was worshiping false idols. I was worshiping, worshiping these sports figures. I was listening to a great audio book on the way home last night, uh, the, the Discipline, uh, a book about discipline. It talked about uh, the queen, the queen of England, how disciplined she was, almost 70-something years service. I was listening to Lou Gehrig, 2,130 games straight playing. Some of the stories they were talking about Lou Gehrig, and I'll share them with you at a, at a future date. The guy had like 17 broken bones in his hands after, they, after he died, they did the x-rays on him. He never missed a game. And we know it takes six weeks to eight weeks to heal a bone, so he played through a broken bone. That, that's, that's discipline, right? So where do we get the discipline? Why, why, why do you come here, Joe, every single Sunday, 8, 15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time? Because I'm looking to serve at least one person. If I can serve two, five, ten, that's even better. But if one person receives this message and go share the, that message with somebody else, then I'm doing my job. Because leadership is not comfortable. As I was hearing last night, a discipline thing says, what, we, what, what these people do that are highly driven, it says, it's not comfortable. It's not getting out of your comfort zone is what they were talking about on that audio book. And that was like two hours on, on the flight back. I listened to that, half of that audio book on the way back. <clears throat> so good morning everybody make sure you're drinking your lemon water right on cue I got it programmed in my body whenever I'm on these zoom calls whenever I'm on our prayer calls coming up here at 9 15 today marks exactly one year seven days a week 9 15 in the morning so when I get into our prayer call send me a message I'll post the link below you can you can jump onto that prayer call and 
these guys are going deep and I got some great insights and got some great notes here to share with you. But ultimately, it's, it's when we come together and create this space so we can just let go of whatever we're holding on to, whatever's in our mind. Most of the time, like I said last week, it's, it's yesterday's thoughts. 70,000 thoughts go through our head every single day. They're yesterday's thoughts, negative thoughts, living in the future, having anxiety. Oh my God, where are we going? The UFOs are coming. I was telling Kat a year and a half ago, we're going to start talking about UFOs soon. Here we are talking about UFOs. It doesn't, don't let that stuff phase you. So we had a conversation this past week, connect to the source. That's, that's, that's your connection. You don't need to connect to the TV. You don't need to connect to the, your cell phone. Connect to the source. I know big shout out to William Mendoza. He turned off his smartphone so he doesn't have to get the distractions of what's going on around the world. He sent me a message this week. He says, Joe, as soon as I turn off the distractions, all of a sudden I found out about the, the revival going on down in Asbury, Kentucky. They've been worshiping down there for 12, 13 days straight now, 24 7. Re revival. That's bringing back the spirit, the spirit of goodness. And that's what we're doing here this morning, bringing the spirit of goodness. That's the intention. So three things we're going to talk about today. So welcome to the Hour of Power podcast. It's the first half hour, the last half hour day, whatever you put in your mind, body, and spirit becomes you. So make sure you're worshiping what you want, not what you don't want. So number one, how do we pray? I've been hearing this a lot. So how do I pray? Number two, men supporting men with the EDGE program. How do, how do we get these men out of their heads and stop being a lone warrior to come home and serve the family, serve the queen, serve their household? Serve their community because most of the time they're out there building business. I need to make money, I need to make money, I need to make money. And the reality is a lot of things are getting left on the, on the side of the road. And the third thing is treating your wife and kids like your clients and customers. Because if, if you don't treat your kids and your, and your queen the way of your customers, you're treating them, they're going to leave you. And I know for me, whenever Kathy doesn't have the right energy and she's, she's giving me the business, that messes up my energy for the whole day. It's the only thing that can throw me off my, my track, going, my train going down the track. When her energy is off, especially the silent treatment, man, when the women give you the silent treatment, you men know what I'm talking about. When they give you the silent treatment, man, that hits us right here. Like, Come on, talk to me. And then you, and you keep nagging them until they start talking to you again. But ultimately, it comes back to you. Don't bring that energy from work home. Make sure you're treating your wife and kids like your customer. Give them an ear to listen to. Even the feedback I got last night from Kathy, she was saying, sometimes I just want you to listen. Did you hear that? How I pause that? Sometimes I just want you to listen. If this is working, please comment down below. Love to make sure this is working now, this volume. But um, you have to listen. You don't have to fix everything. I know for men, especially me, I'm a hands-on guy. I'm always wanting to fix something. She's like, listen, you don't have to fix everything. Sometimes I just want to be heard. That's great feedback for us men. Come home and treat your wife and kids like your customers. Listen to them. What are their concerns? What's the problem that you're solving? Welcome to the Rises One podcast, the Hour of Power podcast here. I know many of you guys in my Rises One group. Please comment below if this is working. I know that the uh, past broadcast for 15 minutes was not working. See, so we're down here in the studio on 122 Main Street. This is the Rises One thrift store where Kathy does all her business. We got a nice little studio set up here now, which I love because we got internet down here where I was over down the road about five minutes away from here. We had tough internet, a lot of internet streaming going through back and forth through the satellite dish. So I was getting broken signals, but I believe these Sunday mornings are working out well here. I think after nine o'clock it gets a little worse. I know 9.15 we're doing our prayer call here, so I got some minutes here with you guys. It's about 8.45, so we got about a half an hour. So let's get into this. How do we pray? All right, so a lot of people. So I met Miguel Sanchez seven years ago, as many of you know. You can watch this I'm going to post on my personal page here. And uh, Miguel started praying during one of our morning rituals. And our morning ritual consisted of gratitude, thankfulness. Waking up in the morning, we're over the ocean, out in the Pacific Ocean, out in San Bernardino, California. Looking over the ocean one morning, Miguel started praying. I said, hmm, that's different than the ritual I thought from that I was taught from Raul Velasquez of the Edge program. I said, okay, so I'll do that. And I never meditated in, in any of that stuff beforehand, and, uh, before I joined the Edge program. So I told you last week, seven years in February 8th. So, uh... That's interesting. He's praying. So how do you pray? So I started asking myself that question seven years ago. How do you pray? Ultimately, it comes back to it's very simple. You having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, intimate relationship with your creator. Just talk directly to him. You know, some guys go, hey, God, what's up? Other people get down on their knees and pray. But whatever works for you, and don't let other people's powerful prayers diminish your light. 
I see this a lot in our prayer group. Guys come on there and they, I can't pray like Miguel. I can't pray like William. I can't pray like Joe. Just pray like you pray. And then we got a couple of new guys that came into the group the last couple of weeks. And now when they first came here, they said, I'm not really sure how to pray. I said, just say what comes to your heart. Just close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Let the energy go and just be in a clean space just to deliver. And man, these guys are praying like, like champions now. And I get a lot of insight. I get a lot of energy. There's many times in these prayer calls when guys will say something. And man, when that hits me in my soul, my whole body goes into like a, like a reflex. Like I feel the Holy Spirit come over me. And it's a really deep connection. That's how you pray. That's how you know when you're praying properly. When you get a connection. And if you don't get it the first week, the first month, the first year, keep praying. Keep blessing other people. Keep praying. And when you do that, eventually, you're like, man, I didn't know I can do this. And that's what happens. We slowly get there. We talk about this in the Edge program. 1% a day. 1% a day. Basics. Basics. 1% a day. So maybe the first day you say, thank you, God, for my health. And that's your prayer for the day. Maybe the next day you build on to that. Thank you for my wife and my kids. Thank you for my life. The gift of life to wake up today. It's my first prayer in the morning. Thank you, God, for one more day on this earth to do your will. It's never been about my will. I thought it was, but it's never been about me. So now as soon as people give me praise, hey, Joe, you did this. It's amazing. Thank you, God. I give all the thanks to God. Don't, 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 don't put that on me. I give all the praise and glory to him. And when you give it back, watch how he multiplies your life with blessings. And if that offends you, say your higher self. Say it's the universe. But for me, it's God. And it's not religion. Even Jesus didn't like religion. It's that direct connection of what you're supposed to be doing while you're here on this earth. That's all you have to do. Fulfill your life purpose. Let's drink some more lemon water. And I'll drink this all day long on a prayer call. I already sent out the messages to the guys. So good to see everybody here this Sunday morning. 8.15 for 15 minutes of silence and the sound of silence. But uh, I came back out here. I think I'm on my personal page now. I'm not the most technological guy, but I am getting better at it. And uh, that's how we pray. You pray directly from your heart. You have to open up your heart directly to the source. God, this is what I'm going through. I know a lot of guys and a lot of gals, when we're at our last rope, when we're, when we're hanging, we talked about last week with the suffocation. We're hanging on that suffocation. Hanging on, you got the last knot of the rope. You got this long rope, and you're just going to let it go. And when you let it go at that point, you just get down your knees and say, God, I can't do this anymore. That's where most of us get to. We get to the space where I can't do it. You get to the end of your ability. It's like Brother Miguel said. When you come to the end of your ability, that's when God and the universe will kick in and take over your life. And most of us that finally find God, find it, our higher self, and get on our knees and we pray when we hit rock bottom. You don't have to be there in order to have that connection. The second thing, men supporting men, we've been getting a lot of feedback. Thank you, ladies, for the feedback. Thank you, men, for the feedback. We've done several podcasts and stuff down when I was down in Houston with Miguel and Robert. Ton of feedback. Thank you for creating this space for men to come to and share what's going on in their lives. Because most of the time, we're bottled that stuff that's inside of us and that's chewing away at our insides. Man, when you get that stuff inside you and before you know you start getting stomach pain, when you get brain fogs, like, why do I feel like this? This heaviness. We call it like the backpack of rocks. You carry around your backpack. I got my backpack here. I brought down here with me today. And you keep every... So often you put a rock in that backpack, and before you know it, you have this heavy-ass backpack, and you're carrying on this backpack of life, and it's wearing you down. Take those rocks out of the backpack that don't belong to you. And that's what we do here at the Edge Program, men supporting men, businessmen supporting businessmen. Because a lot of these guys are the presidents of their companies, they're the CEOs of their companies, and they go, 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 six days a week, constantly in the grind. I know one of the guys in our brotherhood just recently was up to meet the president in Washington, D.C. He was able to lay the wreath. They gave him the honor of laying the wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And Kathy and I and Ben Benita were up there a couple of years ago laying wreaths during Christmas time. So we watched that guy walking back and forth. If you ever experienced that, I would highly encourage you. You can even watch it on YouTube. Look up the tomb of the unknown soldier and watch how these guys just walk back and forth with their weapon. And they got it down to a system, but... This, this guy in our brotherhood was able to lay the wreath that day. Actually, President Biden said to him, said, hey, if you need anything else, he's, he's, a, he's a councilman or a commissioner down in Florida. And uh, they were up there going through how we're going to 
rebuild this county after the hurricane came through. And he said, yeah, give me a, give me a number. Or give me a call. And I, if it was me, I'd be like, hey, man, President, can I get your number? I said, I'll call you. Because if I need something, I know my community needs something. I know the auto power group needs something. I will speak up. I'll be that voice in the voices. I don't have no problem speaking to anybody. My only fear is letting down Father God. Not fulfilling my life purpose when he gave me the mission. Go wake up my kings. Go assist my communities. Go help my people. You better believe I'll be getting up every single day to serve with the intention of serving freely. Asking for nothing in return. That's how you truly serve humanity. That's how you truly serve the people of the earth. That's how you truly serve my wife, my business. Eventually someone's going to be the end user of what we're doing. So what does that mean for you? If you're a manlessness message, reach out to me. If you feel like you're all alone and you're getting tired of the fight and the grind, or someone mentioned this week, I'm grinding all the time, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. That's, to me, that sounds exhausting. If you're going through that, reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. And the last thing is we'll go deep dive into this, treating your wife and kids as your client and customer. So for me, I used to come home and back in uh, 05, 06, 07, I was working from 8 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night. I was driving back and forth from Danbury, Connecticut to Waterbury, Connecticut. I was trying to figure out this fix and flip game in real estate investing. Many of you know, I've been a real estate investor over 21 years now. And I was driving back and forth. My wife looked at me one day. She said, am I ever going to see you again? I said, yeah, you're going to see me when I retire at 50. And the reality was when I retired at 50, she saw less of me. Because now I started doing more things like this and doing more things with our brotherhood and traveling and going all over the world. You guys saw me. I was in like eight or nine states one year traveling all over the place. I'm like, man, you're all over the place. Yeah, well, that's, that's a calling. That's, just, that's, that's what I'm doing. But don't worry about what Joe's doing. What are you doing? To serve your wife and your kids. What are you doing to serve your husband? Sometimes the husbands are staying at home. We have to serve them when we come home. After the, the hard fight on the battlefield when we come home, make sure you're pouring love onto your, your spouse. And for Kathy, her love, love, love language is acts of kindness and quality time. So if I do an act of kindness for her like I did before I left to Houston, I was going to be away from Valentine's Day, right? So I'm being called to Houston to take care of a problem on one of our properties down there, to go meet some engineers and go to City Hall permitting. And all of a sudden I look at the calendar, I booked a flight already, February 14th is Tuesday. So Friday I made sure I went out and took her on a date night, got her some flowers, wrote, wrote her a card, and I had a friend of mine give her that card on Valentine's Day so she can feel my presence. So she can feel that I'm there with her. Even though I'm physically not there, spiritually, mentally, I'm still there with her. That's filling up her love cup, as I say many times in our date nights, in my posts. What are you doing for your date nights? What's up there, my brother? Good to see you. Yeah, I didn't get too much sleep last night, Miguel. I got pulled over on the way home. I went from 55 to 50. I was doing 63. The cop pulls me over like 1230 at night. By the time I fell asleep, it was like 130 in the morning. He did let me go, thank God. I said, yeah, I was down in Houston taking care of some of our properties down there. We're building a veteran house. You probably saw a store down here on Main Street. That's where I am here live now, 122 Main Street, Matthews, Virginia, right across from the food line. Come visit us. Kathy's here uh, five days a week with her thrift store. She'll be here today, this afternoon. She's supporting our veterans. We have our veterans house up in Urbana going on right now. So uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I can tell you, I, I can tell you, got some bags under my eyes from not sleeping too much last night. And I was uh, getting a lot of stuff done. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a calling, and Miguel knows it. This is, this is a calling to make sure you step forward into your truth, into your purpose of, of what you are doing this earth. So a recap. How do you pray, men supporting men, and treating your wife and kids as your clients and customers? would love to hear what you're hearing from these, these three things. And uh, post in the comments below your questions, even after this Facebook Live, say you can hashtag replay and ask a question, I'll respond back to that. Because I'm here to give you some insights and some of the things that I've gone through. You don't have to do those things. Some of the things that I've gone through, some of the things my brothers have gone through, some of the things that my friends have gone through. I had a great conversation with a longtime friend of mine, Roger Perry, when I was down in Houston. I put it on my heart to reach out to him, and um, we had a really good conversation. And he was telling me how God moved in his life. So when we say God, it's not a preachy thing. It's not like, hey, let me tell you about my God. and Let me tell you about the gospel, the instruction manual of life. No one told me about it. But what happened with this Hour of Power, I'm going back a little bit here on what started the Hour of Power, where that came from, 
I got this this insight here when I was down in Trumbull, Connecticut on December twenty fifth, right, Jesus' birthday, and he said, "Well, you got you got to create some kind of a uh, energy, something with energy and an energy flow." So I was, I was writing some stuff down here. I forgot all about. It. I even wrote this, and on this one it, it was said, "Energy flow, the gospel going up and gratitude, grateful going down." And ultimately, that's what we're here for. We're here to be grateful and thankful for every single gift that we get every single day. But um, I'd love to know what you guys are hearing about this. How do you pray? Pray directly to the Father. Pray directly to the source energy. Pray directly to your higher self. Whatever that is for you, whatever makes you feel comfortable, do that. Um, one thing I would definitely suggest is getting one Bible scripture that, that speaks to you. Memorize that. Because it says in the Gospel of John, book one, seek first the kingdom of heaven, all things will be added unto you. So after I heard that, I said, well, how do I seek the kingdom of heaven? There were seven steps to seeking the kingdom of heaven. One of them was memorizing Bible scripture. One of them was praying. So we get on a prayer call here very shortly. And if you want to join us on our prayer call, shoot me a message in the DM here. I'll send, send you off that link. You can join us today for our closing out of the 52nd week, one year straight of going into prayer. Most of the time it's men on these calls every now and again. We get the powerful feminine energy comes in there. We get a beautiful feminine energy that comes in there and prays with us. Man, the men could feel that energy. And it's a blessing. So thank you, women, for showing up on our prayer call every now and again. But most of the time it's the guys letting go. And yesterday we had a really deep conversation letting go of repentance. Yesterday was a big day of repentance. And then all of a sudden when, when, when they were speaking of repenting, it's like, oh, I got something here I, I'm, I'm still holding on to. I have to repent for as well. And letting that energy go. So if I, if I hurt you out there, over my years of unawareness, unconsciousness, I'm sorry. That was not intentional. And most of you guys know that I'm here to serve and love on you. But if, if I've hurt you, I apologize. That was an unconscious version of me that was not enough. Fighting through the battlefield of life, like many of us. We're fighting through that battlefield. You don't have to fight, 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 fight all the time. Get somebody around you that's going to help give you a different perspective. And that's all it is many times. You get a different perspective on where you are in this life. Because if you play the victim over and over again, you will become a victim. If you play the victor over and over again, you will keep winning. Because you don't let the defeats like Lou Gehrig, 2,130 games straight. An Iron Man, the Iron Horse they called him. 17, 14 broken bones he had in his hand as a first baseman. And then he got Alzheimer's. And most of you heard the speech. Today, 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 today. I consider myself, myself, myself. The luckiest man. And that's us. To be here today watching this message, we are the luckiest men and women alive. Because many of us didn't wake up. Many of us are taking life for granted. That was me. That's why I come here to serve you. To lead. And many times it is uncomfortable. Especially getting into the ocean when it's 41 degrees. But I'm showing the Father that I'm committed. I'm committed to doing what is right and just to the best of my ability every single day. What are you committed to? What is your commitment to yourself? First, seek the kingdom. There's a kingdom up there. There's a kingdom right here. And there's a kingdom right here. There's three kingdoms. How do you worship all three of those? The first one we talked about, talk directly to the Father. The second one, the body, the temple. Feed it the nutrition that it needs. Give it the organic fruits and vegetables. Give it the lemon water. Give it the proper foods and diet and nutrition. And all that sugar that we put into our body. The alcohol. Today is like day 50 of no alcohol. I'm not saying that. Say look at me. I'm saying that because of the clarity that I've gotten. I did the same thing last year. I went 100 days with no alcohol. Good morning Julio. What's up my brother? Turn the volume up. <clears throat> there we go. Thank you. Appreciate that feedback. 
But that's the key, is feeding this temple, giving it the power that it needs to get up and operate every day. So if you're going like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, and you're constantly um, tired, or you're constantly at the peak state of like this high sugar energy of white flowers and, and regular sugar or coffee and caffeine, and you crash, you go up and down, but if you're giving your body the right ingredients, it'll cruise along at 70%. And you get a lot of stuff done operating consistently at 70% capacity. Because sometimes you get to 100, sometimes you get to 60, but on the average around 70, instead of going all the way to 100 and down to 10, up to 90, down to 20, that's exhausting. And that's what a lot of us do. Up and down, up and down, up and down. And the last one, what are you feeding the kingdom of your mind? The kingdom of your mind is key. 80% of what we do in this world as humans is mindset. I'll say it again. 80% of what we do in this world is mindset. Your mind can make you sick. Your mind can make you healthy. Your mind can get you where you want to go. Your mind can get you stuck in the gutter, stuck in the quicksand. Your mind can override everything if you choose which is what I heard on that audiobook last night that I was flying back from Houston. You choose to show up every day as Lou Gehrig. You choose to show up as the Queen of England, 70 years serving. They were talking about how many flights she had, how many hours that she spoke to, how many hands that she shook. That's commitment. So if you're called to lead, as a minimum lead in your family, you need to be at peak performance with your mind, body, and spirit all in alignment. Letting that energy flow as I do today at 3.33. It'll be 210 weeks of doing a meditation. You're welcome to join a meditation. You're welcome to join us on a prayer call starting here shortly. But I thank you. I thank you for being here. I thank you for listening to these messages. I thank you for sharing these messages. Because now you're not keeping it for yourself. I thank you for implementing some of these things in your life. I had a conversation with somebody on Saturday. He says, two things I would ask you to do. Number one is take out the word try. I'm going to try and get my body in peak physical condition this year. Instead, say commitment. I am committed to getting my body in peak physical shape this year. You can hear the difference. It gives you the mind. It gives you the certainty that I'm going to commit and follow through on this. Because many a times, you say, I'm going to try to get in shape this year. You can hear it. It sounds weak. You'll go for a little while, and then we stop. But if you say you're committed, you will absolutely overcome and override the mind. That's key. And I hear that a lot when people say these things. I'm like, oh, I see that before. That was me too. Because what do we do? We do what everybody else does. We see what other people are doing. Your kids do what you do. That's what we all do. We fall into that pattern. We fall into that trap. So overriding the mind is key for you to get what you want. So I encourage you, write that down. What do you want? And start working in that direction. Start setting the intention in the morning when you wake up. Be grateful. Focus on the gift in every situation. There's always a gift to be found. Most of the time, we focus on what didn't go right, what, where we failed, especially as business owners. Look at all my failures. Look at all these piled up dead bodies along the way where I was just slashing and cutting, swinging my sword, trying to build this kingdom. Now I hurt all my workers. I hurt all my teammates. I hurt all the people that I love the most. Don't hurt the people you love the most. And that was me. So I apologize. My brother Donnie, my cousin, I apologize to my queen. I apologize to my friends. I was unaware of what I was doing. But now with this newfound awareness, I can go back and rebuild. I know it's part of the 12-step program in AA. You go back and you make amends with the people that you hurt. So if I hurt you, I repent. So thank you for listening to the Hour Power podcast. We'll close it out with a prayer this morning. I'm going to give you a quick little insight on this energy flow. So what is energy? The hour of power with energy? Evolve. Soul wants to evolve. The N stands for now. Do it now. 
The E says lead by example. I heard that twice this week, to be the example. The R means rise, rise above your situation. The G is gratitude going down, the gospel going up. The gospel is your instruction manual for life, is what I just recently found out. And being grateful at all times for everything, finding the gift, you can go ahead and, and increase your capacity and energy to continue to execute. And the Y, always be yourself. There's only one you. As I was coming through the checkout lines yesterday, going into the airport, going to the, through security, I looked right into that camera, boom, and it took my retina on my eyes. I didn't have to show my ID. It took the ID from the retina. So there's only one retina. There's only one pupil. There's only one eye makeup. There's only one fingerprint that makes up you. You are unique and you are a blessing. And I, I'm grateful for you. So always be yourself. There's only one you. Find out what your purpose is here in this world. And I don't care what age you're at, you can start. I'm going to uh, celebrate my father's 85th birthday here shortly in March. 85 years, he's still playing softball. He drives an electric bike to the softball field. Pulls his bat bag out, pulls his glove out, goes out on the ball field at 85 years old, playing ball. So you're never too old to get restarted. So I know most of us fight through this way, especially us men. We fight until our 40s and 50s to get into that tunnel, into that drift, into that midlife crisis. It doesn't have to be a crisis. Pick up the phone. Give me a call. Let's go out there and do this together. The association and the accountability that we'll hold you to and the action plan we're going to create for you and to get that 80% mindset properly aligned with what you want. What you want. What you want. Because the reality is you have to build it yourself first before you can give it to anybody else. You cannot give what you don't have. So I thank you. I, I bless you. <clears throat> Let's put on a little music here. We'll say a prayer and I'll jump into my prayer call here with the guys. Here's a quick little reading for you guys. This is one of our messages of the day. Devotion. Enter God's kingdom, a rich man or a poor man. Luke 18, 24 to 27. In God's eyes, we are all his beloved children. So you are his beloved children. Move forward with certainty knowing that you've been chosen for a time such as this. So bow your heads and take a deep breath in. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we come to you this Sunday morning, February 19th of 2022, as we close out one year straight of honoring you, Father. Father, I reach out to every single man, woman, and child that's listened to this message this morning. I offer them the words of hope, the words of courage to step into an alignment with you, with their life purpose, to be a, bit, a little bit more respectful for those that we love. Be a little bit more patient as we go through this journey of life. Father, I thank you for our health this day. The health of our mind, body, and spirit as we spoke of, putting the organics into our body, drinking the lemon water, taking supplements, fish oil, if you can take fish oil, magnesium, turmeric, and zinc, strengthening those cells. Father, 35 trillion cells make up the body, my brothers and sisters. What are you putting in to feed those cells and making them strong? Father, I thank you for my beautiful queen as she continues to support the veterans from her Rise as One thrift. She continues to support the church and the choir. She was picking out the music last night. She says, she was all excited this morning. I looked into her eyes, gave her a kiss goodbye to come down here, Father. She says, I picked out a new song this week that we've never sung before. That's being uncomfortable that we spoke of in this podcast. You have to get uncomfortable not doing the same old, same old every single day to expand yourself. So, Father, I thank you for the growth in all of our lives as the hour of podcasts continues to show up here every single Sunday at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time to share your good words, to share your wisdom, your earned wisdom through the mind, body, spirit. We bring guests on here through the mind, body, spirit of all the people that come on this podcast, Father. Father, I thank you for Raul Velasquez and the Next Level Experience. I thank you for the safe space that he created for men to come there and be vulnerable. To unload their backpacks. It's not easy, Father. 56 boot camps later, this man is just getting started. I see the men in this brotherhood continue to rise up as I was just down in Houston. My brother Miguel and Robert sharing some of the insights. 
How do we get rid of our toxic patterns is one of them. Many of us have toxic patterns, Father. Some of them are physical, like smoking and drinking. So thank you for my strength and that drink since the beginning of the year. Give me the clarity. Not to diminish anybody else and say, this is my walk. Don't compare yourself to anybody else is what the Father wants you to know. You are on your own walk. Walk it out. Whatever's on your heart, speak your truth. Don't bend. Don't be a pleaser. But absolutely please her. As the 14th of February just passed, you don't have to show love on one day. You can show love every day, Father. Just like you show us every single day that you're here for us. So, Father, I thank you for all these blessings. We pray with joy this morning. We pray for Jesus, Father. For the salvation, the gift of life, forgiving us of our sins, missing the mark. I pray for others, Father. Everybody listen to this message. Far and near, today, tomorrow, and forever. Father, we pray for yourself, the why. Pray for myself and my queen and my friends and my family. Pray for all these blessings over all of our lives, from the crowns of our head to the soles of our feet. Let your spirit move through us, Father. Oh, man, the spirit just hit me, guys. Let your spirit move through us. you got to ask. He's saying you have to ask if you want to receive it. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> when two or more gathered, I shall be in the midst. That's the Bible says. So I thank you. I, my peace, I live you. My peace, I give you. All my brothers and sisters, as we go forward in this journey of life, know that everything is just an experience, my brothers and sisters. It's not good or bad. It's just the experience. So take this wisdom, this earned wisdom. When you fall down, get back up. Rise up one more time. And keep moving forward like Lou Gehrig just never gave up. Just like the queen, she never gave up. Just kept getting up and enjoying the blessing of one more day on this earth to do your will, Father. We pray all these things in Christ Jesus' name of Nazareth. We pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I appreciate you. I thank you. I thank you, Mom. Post your questions below. I'll absolutely answer this for you. We're getting on to our next call here, the one-year mark. Thank you guys for being here today. I appreciate you. I honor you. Go forward this day. My peace I give you. My peace I leave you, Jesus said. Why? Because peace is the highest vibration of man. 600 hertz. Take that 600 hertz. Feel the love. Feel the joy and go forward this day. Be fruitful and multiply because you can. One of my favorite power statements are is to repeat this to yourself. I am, I can, and I will. I am, I can, and I will. I am, I can, and we will. We will rise as one and make a difference, ending the suffering for all of God's children. Keep showing up. You have not seen nothing yet. When it's all said and done, together, we will rise as one. I thank you. Have a blessed and fantastic day. We'll see you next week. If you're going through something, reach out, connect, create, and contribute. It's the name of the game of life. Find your code to the edge. And watch everything become peaceful in your life. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Peace. Love you.